Is EA's launch of Battlefield 5 anti-consumer? Some people in the community seem to think so, although not everybody agrees. Is this EA just being the huge greedy corporation that we all expect them to be, or are they simply offering more choice and better value for their fans? My name's Gareth Evans, this is Henry Cooper, and why don't you tell us about it, Henry? Battlefield 5 has three separate launch dates. That's right, three. Depending on how you choose to pay for the game and, indeed, how much you're willing to pay, you may find yourself sat at home spit polishing your helmet while everyone else is having fun out on the battlefield. The standard version of the game will give you access to play on November the 20th. This is your traditional, some might say old-fashioned, way to pay for and access a game. You pay a single one-off fee which will grant you access to the game on the official launch day. The standard version will set you back in the region of £55 or $60 depending on your platform of choice. Next up, there is the deluxe edition of the game. The deluxe version will set you back around around £70 or $80, but does come with the added bonuses of additional paratrooper gear, special assignments, and weekly airlift items. Importantly, the Deluxe Edition allows you to access the game from November the 15th, a full five days earlier than the people who have the Standard Edition. But if the prospect of slicing up Nazis with a katana a mere five days before everyone else isn't early enough for you, well, you're actually in luck. EA now offer a couple of ways to get your hands on the game from November the 9th. That's today if you're watching this video on the day we publish it. Origin Access Premier is a subscription service launched recently by EA, which will set you back £15 a month or £19 a year. It grants you access to the full game on November the 9th as well as a few other benefits. You get extra content, including microtransaction bonuses and expansion packs with all EA games, early access to all upcoming EA games, including Anthem, access to a catalogue of around 150 EA games to download and play when you like, and 10% off all EA Origin purchases. And if that price is too steep for you, well, you do have another more basic option. It's actually called BASIC. Origin Access Basic costs around £4 per month or £20 per year and will allow you to play Battlefield alongside your less basic Origin Access brethren on November the 9th. Crucially, if you're basic, you only get a 10 hour trial of Battlefield 5, not the full version of the game. However, you do get access to most of the games in the EA library and the 10% Origin discount. This topic has been discussed at length within the community in a Reddit thread which has amassed over 2,000 upvotes at the time of recording. In the Reddit post titled, Paid Early Access in Battlefield 5 is a Convoluted Mess, Reddit user Left Hook Gary says, Battlefield 5 is coming out this weekend but only for certain people. There are four tiers to the release which is just ridiculous. EA and other companies have done it with other games but usually only one tier which is already dumb but this is a new level. What is the day one patch on, the 20th or the 15th? Or is it a negative 11 day patch on the 9th? If it is, how can buying the actual game mean you get it 11 days post launch? If it is on the 15th or 20th, then why are people paying a premium to play a less complete or finished game? It's not early access, it's delayed access. People who will have been charged will be unable to play the game for no actual reason other than an arbitrary barrier made by EA. Some people will have paid for the game in two ways but only be able to play it for 10 hours. That makes even less sense than not being able to play it at all. Why can everyone not just play on the same day like? The restrictions are anti-consumer and entirely fabricated. That's my question. Why can't everyone play on the same day like? Why can't we play on the like, same day like? Like, innit? Come on. You see, either Scouser or Australians do that too. Australians say like. Why can't play on the same day like? No, no. do they? I don't think they do. Don't they? A Scotsman might. We can't even play it on the same day like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Sure, Scottish do too. <laughs> We're very offensive now. <laughs> we offended everyone. Well, we offended a lot of people. Let's, let's see how many more we can offend. So it seems that people are upset because when they're paying for the full game, right? They're paying the, the premium version because it seems like a, you're paying a lot more than other people who pay the subscription. You have to sit there for 11 days and not play the game while everyone else is having fun. Yeah. And you can right. see why people are getting a little bit miffed by that because you're paying 55 pounds and you're not even get to play it like day of launch, which essentially is the ninth these days. Let's be honest, it's launched on the ninth. You just it's just not rolled out to the public until the twentieth. I think it being eleven days early as well is a lot. If it's just a couple of days, say a game comes out on a Friday, then everyone can play it over the weekend. But then if you get early access, you get it on like a Wednesday or something. That's uh, I think that's okay because it's not going to be a massive um, advantage over everyone else and a massive deal. But if it's something you want, you can make, can get that extra. Eleven days is a long time. It's over a week. 
it's a, lo a lot of um, game time you can get because you'll have that weekend where most people are going to be, uh, you know, off work or whatever. I can kind of see why EA do this because traditionally in the games industry, you spend years making a game and then you get one month we might get a spike in revenue because that's when the ga game goes on sale. Whereas this way, if they can get most of the core fans on a subscription service, their revenue is uh, like leveled out over the course of like the year or whatever so we don't get a huge spike and there's not so much volatility ea are sacrificing some of the value of people buying their games day one so you consider a fan who buys three ea games in a year they're going to lose money on them people because if they subscribe to this service because they're only playing 90 pounds whereas for if they paid for the three games they would have paid more than that so they're sacrificing some of that value in the core fans who would be paying for all them games. And in return, they're getting this stability. And of course, get the added bonus of those people who are subscribed. They might check out a game that they otherwise wouldn't. And then they might just drop in a couple of microtransactions in there, buy a couple of loot boxes, end up spending more money than they would not They would never have done in the first place anyway. So that's a, a bonus that kind of negates some of the loss that they're making on these core fans who would have bought um, more games. So in reply to the thread on Reddit, user Skunk Monkey has commented, given how most releases these days are a shit show for the first weeks, I have no problem waiting to purchase a game until after the show. They've got a great point there. The fact that games day one are usually the inferior version these days, right? Yeah, they're full of um, bugs that didn't quite get caught in, in production or beta testing or whatever, so once it's been out for a little while, they, they have chances for like day one patches and stuff. Yeah. So... Uh, they're not necessarily losing out on the gameplay experience but if they're waiting the two or three months it takes if people wait two or three months it takes for the game to be um, patched up properly because games these days don't get QA'd like they used to they don't get released in in working order a lot of the time you get an inferior version day one and you pay the most so I mean this, as this guy says he makes a good point just just be patient I guess yeah Ratiug says how is it convoluted in any way it's very straightforward EA gets money from people with no patience while stress testing the servers and gathering data for the big launch on 20 but the thing is with that they did have um, stress tests in the form of their beta in yeah. um, in September and it's not necessarily making money off people who have no patience because the um the early access thing um, as part of the subscription will do it for some people, but not everyone. A lot of people will want it for the uh, the catalog of games that you can have sure. and the convenience of it all. So yeah. I think calling people impatient, generalizing them in that way is, is a bit strong. Obviously, certain people will be will be doing it because they yeah. want it earlier. They, they are monetizing that impatience in a way, right? So yeah. If people do want to get their hands on it, the only way to get their hands on it right now is by paying what might be extra because they might have already pre-ordered it or whatever so that's their only choice and that's and that's where it's coming from it's like yeah. it's if people are impatient they've got you know they've no choice but to pay the money or that or they always have a choice but um it's it's ea the fact that they're monetizing this impatience which is unlike any other company in the industry right now i don't see anybody else no. allowing 11 days early access yeah. for for subscribers but EA fear, isn't it? EA. Trolling Trolls says, I'm not sure it's fair to say it's people with no patience. I'm subscribing for the first time because I don't want to pay $60 for it and will likely only play it for a month anyway. Just so happens to come with the benefit of getting it a little early. Don't see the issue. And this is a good point for people who only play a game for like, like a month and move on to the next game. There's so many games out there these days. Every, yeah. every month is filled with at least two or three games that um, you want to play. I mean, I know it's like that for me. So I'm not going to play this game for more than a month. So it's actually, if you think about it, paying £15, it might be a good option for people just to pay that one off, play it for a month, move on to your next game. A lot cheaper than paying £60 for a game and then having it on your shelf. You know, you're, you're out yeah. of pocket a lot more. But Battlefield, because it's primarily a multiplayer focused game, there is a campaign there, but the big draw is the multiplayer and that I'd play it a bit but the experience doesn't have any real longevity for me like I would play it for probably about a month and then be like okay I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move on to the next thing so I would just be like okay play it unsubscribe delete it whatever so that, that's exactly the kind of thing I would do. Vikings are better said, Premiere is a subscription based model. I pay 99 a year to play almost every big EA game, most of which are the deluxe edition. Get early access to many, receive discounts on Origin and have a big vault of older games if I want. This is fantastic value. As long as I was going to buy two AAA EA games, then it pays for itself each year. And this is pretty much what we, we, we just said about how if you're already going to be spending money on those games, 
regardless. Yes. You you might as well save yourself some money and uh, get the subscription service. Yes. Although I would hope in my heart of hearts that the number of people who automatically are going to buy EA games two, th two or three times a year would be uh, minimal. Uh, minimal yeah. Because... Oh my God, have we not learned anything uh, from the games industry, especially with the Battlefront um, 2 and the loot boxes, how they tie progression into the loot boxes, right? If you're paying for games before you know exactly um, what, what the state they're in, if you, and, and this is my problem with a subscription service. I mean, I like the idea of having that option, but you're essentially giving EA money on the promise that their games are going to be any good, that their games are not going to be faced with all these shitty issues, that they, they're going to be monetizing them in a fair way and they're not going to be trying to take loads of microtransactions, loot boxes or whatever, whatever shitty things they can think of next. You're trusting EA that the games that they're going to release in future are going to be good by using this subscription service. That's my problem. It's like we always say wait for day one reviews, right? We always say listen to the reviews what they've got to say about the game before you decide whether it's any good whether it's worth your money although it, for some people it might it might be worth it maybe but i don't know if there's any specific publishers or developers for me that i would want a subscription service for for just their content because most of them can't punch out quality quality stuff several times a year yeah. look at companies like naughty dog or rockstar or cd project they'll have one amazing game and then a couple years off to work on the next yeah. one if you're re reeling them off bang 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 the quality is just not going to be there so i don't know if you can have any other dedicated um ex kind of exclusive publisher developer based services of, of the caliber that I think we really want. Yeah, I think I think the only other competing subscription service out there right now is, is the Xbox Microsoft version of it, where you pay a monthly fee and you get the games day one, or the Microsoft first party games day one. You also get a library of games too, which which people say is good value. But again, you're trusting that they're going to be bringing out these good games on a regular basis to to. Um, earn that money that you're giving them. Yeah, we're with TV platforms like Netflix, they're doing very well because they've got all of these different licenses and franchises as well as their own personal exclusive stuff, which they do pump out a lot of, but I don't think many people would subscribe to Netflix just for their exclusive content. There's some good stuff, yeah. but you're, you're there to get all of the, the wide breadth of different movies and TV shows. If they were going to do a subscription service like this, like this with specific developers, they'd have to make it really cheap. Yeah. But then it wouldn't be profitable to the developers because games are expensive. Yeah. And so going back to the original post then, that, the, the issue that we're discussing, is this anti-consumer? Is this not consumer friendly? I personally, I mean, you're entitled to your own opinion. I, I think it's all right. I, th I think it's just them, EA's way of trying to get people to help them consolidate their business, to help them make, make sure that they've got um, a recurring revenue every month and, and to stabilize their, their business, essentially. I don't blame EA for doing this. Uh, it's only 11 days, be patient, and you don't even know what the game's like. Why, the, the, the pro people who've got a problem with this are the people who want it right now, want to pay for it right now, get access for it right now, and aren't able to pay for a subscription. And if, you're, if, you're, if you want to get the game right now before even knowing um, what it's like completely, all right, you might have played the beta. You might have already decided, having played hands-on with it, that you're going to buy it anyway. That way I can kind of excuse it. But 11 days, just having to wait 11 days, I don't think it's too much. But I think value for money wise, if you are a core EA fan and you play the games year on year, why you'd want to do that is beyond me. Why would you want to play the same fee for every single year? Beyond me, but if you're that kind of person, then EA Origin Access is probably a good good value proposition yeah. for you. Yeah, definitely. For, for your, your big EA fans, because apparently there are some out there, they're really going to benefit from this. Do you think this is in some way EA getting scapegoated or people associate or characterizing EA as the villain in the industry and this, uh, just criticizing them instantly without thinking it through a little bit too much? I think it is a bit because they have done some very bad things in the past and this isn't necessarily a good thing. It, it, there, there's good and bad to it. But I think having that branding of always being the bad guy means that people see their name on it and immediately think it's a bad thing. But when you, you look into it a bit more and have a think about it and consider raw numbers like the prices and the amount of time, yeah. it, it seems like a, an all right deal to me. For, for some people, that's for sure. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. Like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Hit the bell for notifications if you want to be notified when we release any of these videos. You can support our content over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. We will see you again in the next video. Until then, bye for now.